today I'm taking a look at Spitfire Audio's Hauschka Composer Toolkit and it's a really interesting release by Spitfire. If, like me, you don't know who Hauschka is, he's a renowned German pianist and composer who's best known for his compositions in prepared piano. So, what's prepared piano? Well, according to Wikipedia, it's a piano that's had its sound altered by placing objects called preparations on or between the strings. It's a simple but ingenious idea that gives uh, gives a myriad of sounds and textures from the piano that are ideal for media compositions. They give that sort of real atmospheric feel like, yeah, here we go. What's this one I'm playing here? Pad sounds on the grid. Here we go. Just playing what first thing that comes up, really. So you can hear how atmospheric that can be. Something lower down, maybe. So lots of different textures in there. I feel a little bit scared. I feel like the baddies are going to get me. And you can easily imagine any of these in a film score. And with their uh, 40 preparations they've got recorded, uh, it's easy to find hundreds of nice little atmospheres in here. Let's just go to, I don't know, let's just... Let's just randomise that and see what we come up with again. Picking things at random, let's go to the swell grid. I've loaded lots of them in here, just to make things simple. Really atmospheric, isn't it? Let's mix this one up and see what we come up with. So pretty much any time I pick a new sound and play around with the grid or play around with a different instrument, I'm getting loads of really useful sounds. So we'll demo a few of the sounds and how it works, but as it's so obviously a great tool for media composer like TV, film, video games, and whatever you want to think of really, anything where you need to create an atmosphere, um, I thought it'd be interesting to show how it can add new dimensions and some real life and excitement to electronic music. So I'll also run through the intro music that I've just played and put some standard atmospheric pads and then compare it with the sounds from this and stuff. So, so to jump straight in, let's go back to this pad sounds instrument because there's some nice stuff in there. Uh, and we can see here, this is the Evo grid. It's sort of Spitfire's USP, really. And what you have on the left-hand side, you have the notes across the keyboard. So you have the low notes at the top and the high notes at the bottom. Always find that a bit weird. So there, I'm playing a D3. And it's playing preparation six uh, or sample six. So on this sound, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You can see seven different preparations or seven different samples. And each of these is a range of keys. So this is D3, E3, F3, G3, A3. And then we get to A sharp three. You can hear it's playing a different preparation. So if we come down to the bottom and we press Option and Command, we can pick all of them. And let's just run through these quickly, so, so you get an idea of what happens with these Evo grids. So you can hear they're all sort of similar along the same theme, but they're different. So if we press this randomize, I think this is meant to be a dice here. Randomize with any. We're getting a mix across the keyboard. which is a fantastic way of just bringing in really strange, interesting textures. Uh, so you can randomize a few times and just find what works best for you. And here we have different inputs or mics. We've got main mix, we've got pedal board distortion, and we've got modular. So main mix, 
Let's put it on this one that had some nice higher tones, higher frequencies. So there's nothing wildly different between them, but it does mean that you can do some really nice subtle changes and have really fine control over the sound. So again, let's mix that up. A bit more delay, a little bit of release on there, a bit more of the modular, quite like that. So it's real instant atmospherics. If you've got a piano at home, trying to get that yourself is a will be a pretty much a nightmare unless you've got a grand piano because you're not going to be able to lay things on top of the strings. And if, like me, you've got a studio full of synthesizers, these are really difficult sort of sounds to pull out. And yes, the sample libraries that you can pick up that have atmospheres and things like Omnisphere's got lots of different atmospheres in it, but they don't feel like this. They don't feel as live or as organic as this. So on the instruments, you've got plug hits, you've got all these different grids, A to E, and then you have these artist presets. So there's a lot, I think there's 40 different preparations in there. Some of these use the Evo grid and some use their Mercury engine. So let's have a look at one with the Mercury engine. Ping Kong, let's see what that sounds like. Let's mute the others. So Ping Kong, this uses their Mercury engine, which if you've seen this before, it's got low pass, high pass filter, ADSR. It's got three LFOs plus different effects at the bottom. Let's chuck some twang, some phaser, maybe a bit of LFO through there. And on the left here, you've got different microphones again. In the manual, they're labeled as close mix, pedal effects, distortion echo, tape echo, and modular effects. Um, but on this, for some reason, they're just labeled as one to six. Well, that's what they are anyway. Lovely little tone there. Let's put three on, see what three is. Try one. There's a third option from the Evo grid and the Mercury instrument, and that's this view here that a few of the instruments have. And this is where the mics are labeled. So when I was saying it wasn't labeled in the manual on these six over here, it's different. This different view from the uh, from this view here, where you've got the close, the mix, the pedal effects, distortion effect, tape echo, and the modular effects. And here you've got this expert view, where you can do all sorts of trickery as well. You've got different samples here, percussive drum kit or the full drum kit range. Let's have a listen. So that's percussive drum kit. Then we can go to drum kit full range. If you hold shift, I think you can play them both. Yeah. So again, let's stick them through the modular effects maybe, can we? <laughs> There's a lot of stuff in there. And you've got different triggering options in expert mode, so you can trigger different articulations based on things like velocity, speed of playing, MIDI channel. So you can get a huge amount of variation from a single instrument, depending on how it's played or how it's sequenced. So play, whether you're playing it live or whether you sequence it using different channels, there's, there's a huge amount of variation you can get from each of these sounds. The video on Spitfire's House page has him talking about his inspiration, and he talked about electronic music and using the preparations, a bit like being a synthesizer. And after having a play with these, I can say it really sits well with electronic music, adding some really interesting organic feels and textures. Like, as I say, it's really difficult to get just using modular systems or synths alone. Samples obviously have the place in electronic music, but the way they've arranged these and the way they make it so accessible is really genius, I think. So I'll play a little bit of that intro track, and what I'll do is I'll play it using the original sort of background pad sound user, and this is from Omnisphere. Nothing wrong with it, it's really nice, but... Um, I picked up the Hauschka and, and replaced it, and I'll show you why. 
So as you've just taken out all the Hauschka add-ons, you can see I've used lots of them all over the place. So it's all very nice that there's nothing wrong with it but it felt a bit like it needed a little something extra so i used house and used bouncing around grid and i just did a randomization on it and got this little riff from it i should solo this <laughs> And that's just playing the same notes, the same MIDI file as this. It's a two really distinct parts. Both work, but I think the I think the house go just with that organic feel sort of adds something extra to the track. So just to play with a few of the other sounds I've used, this one's called Purity Seal. Lovely, and um, this one called Sun Flares. He's just in the intro, just to add a bit more depth. Some little hits. Nice reverse. Followed by a sort of a distant pad. So putting it all together, I'll just play through that track now. It's only a short one. I have to say, it only took a couple of hours to put all this together. Without those samples or with, without the house pack, it would have took me a hell of a lot longer to do this. And they give me the sort of organic feel that I was after. So I hope that was of some use to somebody somewhere. See you next time.